It was a long one. You got, you got the picture? What's happening? Yeah. Who's the main guy here? Nehemiah. or Nehemiah? Nehemiah. I like to say Nehemiah. Yeah, okay. And, uh, okay. So we, we need to know when this guy was. Okay. Next slide. Okay. This is a Bible history chart. And at the bottom, ancient empires, right? Six empires. And one is coming soon. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Where is Nehemiah? Can you, can you find him? I can, I can see, see his name. He was after Daniel, right? Uh -huh. After Daniel and before Jesus, right? And he, he was in Persia, Medo Med Persia, right? There, right there. And next click. See, he is right there. <laughs> his name is right there. He was in the era of Persia, okay? And he was, he became a cup bearer, okay, to the king, the king Artaxerxes, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the king of Persia. Israelites had been praying for one prayer concern for 150 years, and it was answered through this guy within 52 days. It's amazing, right? Amen. What would you say about this situation? You know, you have been, you, you group of people praying for 450 years and then it just answered within 52 days. And in my opinion, I, I like to say it was answered by the accumulated prayers of all the Israelites, right? Or these people. And or it was right time for God to answer this prayer, right? But I will point it out. One man was ready. Like, it could be Joshua, it could be Sam, it could be anybody in here. If one man is ready, God can answer for prayer. So, who is this man then? Nehemiah. Nehemiah. Han Jung Sazim said Nehemiah, but <laughs> she likes Maya anyway. <laughs> okay, so Nehemiah, and God's answer came in the form of man like Nehemiah, okay? And this is the way God works. God provided answers of prayer through a man, and this one person is very important. At the start of sermon, I already told you, right? One man is very important. And when Israel was crying out loud to, to God for the hard works in Egypt, God raised who? No, no, no. In Egypt, God called Moses, right? And then when they have, you know, severe drought and famine, God called Joseph, right? You remember the, the, the animation Joseph, right? And then to open the salvation of Gentiles, God used a man called Gentiles. Paul, Paul, right? Paul is, you know, he, he gave out the gospel to the Gentiles, right? The one man is very important, and you and I, you and I can be this one man to God. Amen? Amen? Okay, so God has been waiting as a key person to respond, you know, the prayer concerns, okay? And Israelites gave a, you know, nickname to this guy, Nehemiah, and it, he was called to Israelites a man who brought the dawn of history. Dawn of history. You can be a man who brought the dawn of history. Amen? Amen, Amen. Amen Sam. You can Amen. be like, you can be called to others. Sam was the man who brought the dawn of history. Amen. Amen? So let me ask you a question here. And what was the prayer concern for Israelites for 150 years? What was that? Yes. Yes, right. Rebuilding the temple of God and Jerusalem. You know, Jerusalem and because of, you know, Nehemiah, Israelites finished the war of Jerusalem. The war is very important. And I'll, I will talk about that. And the temple of God and uh, Jerusalem, you know, they, it, those were destroyed by whom? Babylon, right? Babylon and Israelites were 
taken as captives to Babylon, right? And Nehemiah was the leader of the third return, you know, people to the uh, to the Israel, and he 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 was like he he led third group. There was first and second. He was he was a leader of the third group returning to Israel, and the the time differences. You know, uh, from the start and the end was 150 years. And how how did he complete all these constructions within 52 days? How could he do it? And we will look at five things about Nehemiah and to be used by God as a Christian leader. Okay, five things you should keep in mind. Okay. Okay, amen? amen. Joshua, okay, open eyes, open your eyes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Nehemiah is okay. The first thing is Did you let it flip it? No, ne next one. The first thing was Nehemiah was a man of prayer. 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 And what do you think about the first qualification? This is you know, God wants us to pray to God. Okay? God wants to show his presence through this person too, right? So, Nehemiah was a man of prayer. And in James, book of James, James mentioned that Elijah as a model of prayer, saying that, let's, let's read it all, all together. Elijah was a man, man like us. Like okay, Elijah was a man like me and like you and anybody. And he prayed earnest that it would not rain. He earnest, honestly prayed, and it was, there was no rain. And it was not rain on the land for three and a half years. Okay, so what does that mean? Elijah or you, we are the same normal man, but something was different. Elijah earnestly prayed to God, right? And that means, it means Elijah was a normal person, but just like us, but prayers, prayer needs practices. You need to practice prayers. Amen? Amen? Okay, you can be like Eliza by practicing prayers. Okay? So we are here to practice prayers. Okay? 현정 선생님, 윤지 선생님, 목사님 teaches us, they, 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 they teach us how to pray in, in, in tongue and in our words too. Okay? Prayer requires practices. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, in, in these days, we all assume that oh, prayer is not for, for men. Okay? Only women, they do it. Okay? You may say that. But who are the people of prayer in the Bible? The greatest prayer, you know? Nehemiah, we saw it, right? And Daniel. Daniel, is, is, he, is he a man or a woman? <laughs> he, okay, he's a man. Samuel. Sam was the man of prayer, okay? And then let's, let's read it all together, okay? Uh, okay, sorry, I, I, I didn't include that. As for me, Samuel is saying that, as for me, far be it from me that I should not sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. So, Elijah was thinking about not praying to God is sin to himself. So these are all men, not women. You know? <laughs> so they prayed the, they they like these are all men and they prayed with a loud voice. And Jesus also prayed, you know, he's a man too, right? Jesus prayed in a loud voice that all the disciples they heard about the prayers and they wrote in the book of gospel, right? right? So, change your mind and image in your mind that prayer is for women, okay? We should, men should pray in a big and loud voice, okay? Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm saying that, guys, pray out loud to the Lord and raise your holy, holy arms. I mean, let's read it. I want men everywhere to lift up holy hands in prayers. This is first Timothy, right? Timothy is suggesting us, man, stretch out your holy hand and pray to God. Okay? So what are you going to say 
God in your prayers. So what, what is your prayer concerns? The first thing, you know, the Nehemiah did was repentance. He repented. And I will give you some example. Let, let's look at the, you know, Nehemiah's case. Okay. Okay. Let's read it all together. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants. The people of Israel, I confess, the sins we have, we, we Israelites, right? Sins, okay? And then including myself, my father's house have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly towards you. We have, have not obeyed obey the commands, decrees, and laws to your, gave you gave your servants Moses. Moses. Prayers of what? Repentance. Okay? These are the prayers of, what did he pray for? He, his own sin, fathers, all the Israelites, right? So, you need to repent your own sins and sins in your family and others around you too who who, who are related to you. You, you know, in, in this situation, God will listen, He will answer to your prayers, right? Start with your prayer with repentance. And the second thing is that, you know, about His prayer, uh, let's find out, you know, what you should, you know, do in, in, in Nehemiah's prayer. Let's read. Okay, next one. Remember, Remember the instruction, instruction you gave your servant, Moses said, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But, but if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if, even if you exile, exile people who are at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from, from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as dwelling place for me. And, you know, these Bible verses from... Uh, Okay. Okay. These Bible verses are from Deuteronomy. He, uh, you know, Nehemiah referred the the book of Deuteronomy. Okay, and you that means you need to know words of God when you pray, so that you can refer the words of God in your prayers. Then God have to answer your prayers. Amen. If you pray. To God according to the promises promises in the Bible, God will listen to your prayers immediately. Amen? So you have to know what? Words. words of God. Okay? So now I'm going to talk about the second, the first qualification was man of prayer. Second qualification that I'm going to talk about is uh, to be used by God and to be a Christian leader. Okay? The Nehemiah became the cup bearer of the king and this is like a you know vice president of United States you know and Nehemiah tested king's wine you know before king is drinking the wine Nehemiah tested it mm -hmm. and whether there is a poison or not this is the job of cupbearer and he was right next to the king of Persia Persia was a big country at the time and you know, empire right mm -hmm. and Nehemiah was a good friend and counselor of the king King, you know, just Nehemiah is a friend of king, anyway. So Nehemiah was very, very successful in his career, right? As a cup bearer. But he was from where? He was a captive, third generation of captives. And in this situation, you know, Nehemiah did not need anything that, you know, he, he's a cup bearer, number two in the, you know, in the per Persia. And in that situation, the second quali qualification to be used by God comes, okay? That you should have a holy dream. So I do not need anything else in, in, in eyes of, you know, outside world. But he had holy dream. What was the dream? If somebody, you know, if somebody only cares about himself and his own family, God does not use this person. Okay, that's why we are sending, you know, mission trips to Haiti to see others' situation too. We give, you know, we gave, you know, changes. Uh, we have to give, you know, we have to change our minds. And for 
and you have to look others too. For Nehemiah, he had a successful life in, and in his career he was very successful as a third generation person out, um, out of the captives, right? And let's see his, okay. And he did not need anything else, but let's see his, you know, his responses. Okay, Nehemiah uh, chapter 1 verse 4. When I, I heard, heard these things, things. okay, he, he heard about the Jerusalem is, is, is not in good condition, okay? And I sat, sat down, down and wept. wept. Four, four, day, days. four days I mourned and fasted and prayed before God of heaven. Okay? Please get out of your own well-being and see others' situations too. And please have holy dreams like Nehemiah and then you will be used by God greatly. Amen? Amen. 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 So that was second uh, in a qualification. And let's talk about the third one. And as the third generation of captives, Nehemiah became the cupbearer. And this means that he was a man of, you know, diligence and faithful. Okay? How can you, you know, elect a cupbearer if you are king? You mm -hmm. have to, you know, elect this person very faithful and sincere guy, right? Mm -hmm. So the king asked Nehemiah to come back. When, it, when we read it, right? When are you going to come back? Right? I will send you, but when are you going, going to come back? This means that Nehemiah became a faithful friend to king because of his diligence and sincereness, right? If you are faithful and dil uh, diligent to your work, God will use you. Okay? For, for you students, okay? You, always, you don't have to be number one in, in your class. But you have to do your homework. You have to attend the class. That's the basic thing, right? To be, you know, faithful, faithful students, right? Mm -hmm. And when you have your, okay, when you have your own kid, you should, you know, teach them your faithfulness and sincereness to, mm -hmm. uh, to your kids too, right? Mm -hmm. And when you have a, okay, for example, you know, for the Israelites, they teach their descendants to be faithful and very diligent for, for their job. Okay? When, when they have, you know, for example, when they have a bakery in, in the town, they try to make the best bread in the town for the Israelites. And when they fix the shoes, and they should be the best, best guy to fix the you know, shoes too. And when, when you know, and please be faithful and uh, diligent uh, in your chosen field, okay? So be the, you don't have to be the best, but you should do your best. Amen? So do you remember Joseph? When he went to prison, the warden paid no attention to, to things under you know, Joseph because he was faithful. Okay? So the same was for Daniel. Daniel kept his job even though, you know, the, the four, about four kings has been changed. But he kept his job because he was faithful and he was capable to do anything, right? So, when Nehemiah arrived at Jerusalem later on, he immediately and secretly went out to see the status of Jerusalem. Okay, to see it. And to be used God, please be faithful and sincere on your job. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Okay. So, the, okay, we are getting close. Okay. <laughs> okay. Before, you know, okay, before I talk about the fourth qualification, we need to know about the political situation here. The, the king, Alta Xerxes, he was the king of Persia after the Babylon, and this king, you know, should help Nehemiah to rebuild the Jerusalem, right? Nehemiah had to ask this king, you know, out of the conversation with the king, right? And Nehemiah needed to get something out of, the, out of this king. And let's read, you know, the Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 3. But, but I, I said, said to the, the king, king, 
May the king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my fathers are buried lies in, the, in ruins and its gates have, have been destroyed by fire? This is the you know, start of conversation. And the first qualification to be used, God, is that you need to control your tongue. So this means that you should speak well. Okay? So you, you know what? You know, this king, this king, very king, stopped building the Jerusalem. Okay? The first group of the Israelites went back and started rebuilding the Jerusalem temple and, you know, the city. Later on, the king got a bad report saying that, the Israelites will not listen to the king when they finish the rebuilding Jerusalem castle and the walls around it. So the king stopped the construction activities. This king. So the king stopped rebuilding Jerusalem and now Nehemiah wanted to get a you know rebuilding permission from this king. So that conflicts, right? Mm -hmm. So like if I were Nehemiah, I I I, w I would say, you know, because of you stop rebuilding, yeah. rebuilding the Jerusalem, I'm sad. <laughs> okay? So this is not the right way to get something out of your king, right? So Nehemiah was not like me. So when you get some help from the upper rank person, like a king, do not condemn this person. Okay? Instead, you, he said differently. When, okay, he did not condemn this king, but he made a fact very small and personal thing. Instead of, you know, this, uh, this is a dream of our, our, you know, Israelites, you know. It's not like that. He made us, the, the topic as very small, uh, favor and personal thing. So Nehemiah said, the city where my father are buried lies in ruins and Gates has been destroyed by fire. So this is sounds like very small mm -hmm. and personal, mm -hmm. right? So you should learn this kind of conversation skills. Mm -hmm. In addition, you know, Nehemiah said that, may the king live forever at the start of you know, in verse 3 and verse 7. If it pleases the king, Nehemiah just put this, you know, you know, nice words to king at the start of you know his reply. So Nehemiah knew his position and he acknowledged the authorities. Okay? So out of the conversation with the king, Nehemiah finally got permissions of being, you know, permissions of rebuilding the Jerusalem and war and temple and so on. He got the permission. So he won he got what he wanted. So this is how he could finish the construction, the war, I mean the war around Jerusalem within 52 days, okay? The last qualification, last one, okay? Nehemiah finished the war of Jerusalem, and why is the war of Jerusalem is so important? Why? She knows it, right? <laughs> what does the war mean to you? I mean, this war means, okay, let me tell you, this war means the boundary between the word and holy land. So this is the first thing that you should do when you rebuild the temple inside of you. Amen. We are the temple of God Amen. and we should build the war between holy part of our mind and worldly one. So we, that means you, you have to protect yourselves from the worldly stuff. So we have the basic guideline on, on Sundays, I will attend worship, I will listen to the words of God. Amen. That's the minimum boundary to me. Something like that. So the first thing, this, this is the first thing that you should do when you rebuild your temple inside of you. Okay? You should make this boundary between word and you. And okay, so do you live a holy life that which is different from the word? Think look at your 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 you know inside and is it enough to to
to be God's temple? How is it? How is your inside? Do you have full of junks and dirty stuffs? And you have to get rid of them in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay? So, if you need some help, ask teacher Hyun Jung 선생님, Yoon Jin 선생님. They will teach you how to do it. So, in, in, in book of Nehemiah, you know, there are 10 gates. And the meaning of gates has been, you know, given to you already before, right? Mm -hmm. Through Hyun Jung 선생님. And I, I remember that Yoon Jin 선생님 taught you guys mm -hmm. in the Wednesday Bible yeah. study, right? Mm -hmm. You did it. So I'm not going to mention that, but the, the question that you should keep your mind is to build the temple of God and to be used by God is whether you have the boundary, the word between word and you. Amen? Amen. 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 Next slide. Summary. Okay, summary. So Nehemiah was, he was a model of Christian leader. And there are five qualifications to be used by God like Nehemiah. First one, let's speak out loud. Man, man of, of prayer. prayer. He was man of prayer. Second, have, have a, a holy dream. dream. Okay, have a holy dream, which is given by God. Okay. Three, be, be faithful, faithful and, and sincere. sincere especially your job, and you have to acknowledge the authorities. Okay. Four, Control, Control your, your tongue. tongue. Get the, you know, conversation skills from Nehemiah, okay? Five, make, make boundary holy. between what? The world, the world and, holy. and holy patch of land in you. Amen. Amen? To build the temple inside of you. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is word of God. Amen. Amen. 